Hi, this video is about GPT-5 predictions and expectations. My name is David Hood and I'm CEO of 42 Robots AI where we help organizations implement AI. So I have a picture of Orion on here because a lot of people think that it will be named Orion, maybe with some, some numbers, um, and also decrypting some of Sam's recent uh, tweets. People are saying, he's saying, oh, I'm looking at Orion, which is nice in the winter sky or some stuff, some crap like that. Um, I, I think that's a pretty big waste of time to be spending too much time on that. Uh, to be honest, I think um, there's a, a, a too much of a big focus on the models themselves, and especially the model companies like OpenAI. I'd like to see more people praising companies like Palantir, who are actually working on real-world scenarios, to real-world solutions to, that actually add value to organizations and companies right now today. Um, and there just seems to be not much of that. And I, I go into some of those details and in, in, I have a link to a strawberry video and, and uh, the GPTX use case fallacy, which I think will uh, be very relevant to a lot of my GPT-5 expectations. So I've gotten um, some flack in the comments uh, in terms of me saying that there's an, a progress slowdown in LLMs. And so I'm going to um, elaborate on that as a, a, in terms of, it, which will be help, um, help uh, lay the context for my predictions with regards to GPT-5. So first of all, let me uh, tell you what I'm not saying. I'm not saying technology is slowing, slowing down. I'm not saying AI as a whole is slowing down. Um, I'm saying LLM related technology. I'm not saying LLM related technology is slowing down. So that's not LLMs themselves, but a lot of the stuff around it, that is where I expect to see continued progress because most, most of the focus has been on LLMs themselves. Um, I'm not saying new breakthroughs are impossible. Definitely new breakthroughs are possible. And I'm not saying transformer is the end of the AI technology. Um, I, there's probably another non-transformer large language model or AI model technology in our future. Um, I do think that would, is probably needed for AGI, to be honest. Uh, and I've got a lot of reasoning to back that up with because of the limitations of large language models. I know they pass all these crazy evals and all, all these ways, but the eval, evals do not tell you a whole lot about AGI or what the meaning of things really are or how valuable the models really are. There is some amount of data, that usefulness to that data, but it is not a complete data set, if that makes sense. So it's not like it means nothing, but it certainly doesn't mean everything. And it certainly isn't something where you can bring all the uh, you can get this massive amount of meaning out of it to where it's like, oh, because the evals are, if, the, if, if an LLM scores 100% on all the evals, that does not necessarily mean it's AGI. In fact, I would, I would argue that an LLM it, uh, with the transformer technology cannot be AGI by itself. Um, and marginal improvements in the evals. Basically, since GPT-4 has come out, there's been, you know, another model comes out, it's at the top of the leaderboard, and it's like, oh, it beat the last one by 1%. Um, overall, great. I mean, that, that, is that a big deal? Um, no. Um, I think that basically you have GPT-4, you have a multimodal, which is arguably an improvement uh, on the LM itself, or maybe it's kind of a separate kind of bolt-on. Um, and then you have Claude 3.5, which was better, which is better than GPT-4, but it's not like it was like orders of magnitude better. In a lot of use cases, actually, they give you basically the same result. Also, using the evals, to, to, for 01 um, and, and comparing it to previous large language models is like comparing apples to strawberries. Uh, 01 is not just a model. It is an, there is a new model in there, but it's also a process or a very simple algorithm that uses chain of thought and probably some other uh, techniques in there to, to cycle through the model and to have it do different things. So it is not a model in of itself, so it's kind of cheating for them to use the evals to, and describe it as the model because it's not just the model that is being used. Also, if we look at a lot of the use cases for GPT-4, uh, like what, what you could do with GPT-4 in April 2023, there's a lot of stuff that, it, that O1 and, um, and uh, Claude 3.5 don't really improve on that you could do just as well with GPT-4 in April 23 that you could do today. Okay, so um, there's also this, and I, I, I didn't get the, uh, the compute, but basically there, this is a linear with a non-linear exponential growth and it has kind of, it has a deteriorating benefit. So you're putting in exponential resources, so exponentially more compute to get a linear, let's just call this an improvement 
um, to get linear improvement on, on, on the outputs. Um, also, uh, it's unclear if they'll also run out of data. So that could be a hard limit. Um, I think that we, we are generating data as a species, so we're generating more data every all the time, but it's unclear if, it, if it's anywhere near the rate at which is needed to, to, to get these the improvements that we want. Um, and OpenAI has their own benchmarks. This one's even worse. It's asymptoting. It's actually getting, they're having to put exponential compute in for less and less linear. It's not even linear, it's nonlinear, but in the, in the other direction uh, uh, results. So they're getting less and less improvement by GPT-4. So if you kind of extrapolate this out, GPT-5 is probably going to be uh, very close to the same uh, here. I'd be I'd be willing to bet that it wouldn't be that much lower, just based upon uh, just based upon this graph in and of itself. So if you tell me large language models are still exploding at a at a rapid pace, bring the data because uh, this is also backed up by our real world tests of actually trying to build uh, real world solutions within our company um, uh, and also for clients that the models themselves, the large language models themselves, have not improved that much. Claude 3.5 is better than GPT-4, but not by a lot and not in every case. And um, I expect GPT-5 to be uh, better, but not in all, all the cases. So let's take a step back also in to, to give you some context here. The difference between GPT-1 and GPT-2, GPT-2 to GPT-3, and GPT-3 to GPT-4. So these were all major, major changes. Like one was pretty garbage and, and almost useless. Two, there was some like indications for like, this is actually gonna be something, but it was still not really nearly as useful. And actually even three to 3.5, there was a substantial uh, improvement that they, they made there. But three to four was, huge, was, was also substantial. But I would expect that the, the smallest difference among all of these to be GPT-4 to GPT-5. Again, I think that there's gonna be a lot of use cases, more than not, where GPT-4 does it just as well as GPT-5. Um, and that it's, they're getting more and more of the edge cases, they're getting more and more of the marginal results. Um, I do predict it'll be more than a model. If they're talking about Orion, I think that it'll be like Strawberry and that it is not just a model in and of itself. It's a model plus some process to it. Um, Llama 4 should also be out around, uh, let's see, Zuckerberg said, I think he said later on this year, they're gonna try to have Llama 4 out. And I expect Llama 4 to compete with GPT-5. Uh, is it going to be is it going to be better than it? Probably not, but it should compete with it. Um, and uh, you know, again, let's talk about the evals because it will be better at the evals, no doubt about it. All these model companies are optimizing for the evals because if you get a great score on the evals, you get funding, um, and you get attention, and everybody gets gets excited, even if it's just a marginal improvement. Um, but really. What, what is a more practical way of looking at this is, are these models good enough for specific use cases? And in a lot of cases, right now, as of today, in September of 2024, a lot of the models are good enough for a lot of different use cases. They're just not getting used for that because everyone's focusing on the models themselves instead of how to use them as tools. So I think people will get very, very excited and they'll shoot down people who are, have, have a more practical perspective on it and say, oh, it's still, it's awesome, it's AGI or whatever. Um, but to me, I, I expect underwhelming usefulness. I think it'll be more useful, uh, but mostly around edge cases that couldn't be solved before uh, with the previous models. I don't expect it to be, the idea that it's gonna be, have a bigger delta than three to four uh, does not add up. It, it, it should be a much smaller delta and all the data uh, in terms of exponentially, having to add exponential resources to get a linear and degrading result points to it not being as good. Now, I think they're gonna cover that up a lot by using it as more than a model, uh, which is a little bit cheating in comparing apples to strawberries. Will it be AGI? I, I, I don't know, I, I, think, I think everybody needs to really slow their roll on the AGI. Um, I get it's exciting, it's very interesting, um, to, to think, oh man, we got our robot friends here. Uh, but in, in reality, uh, I think that there's a lot that needs to happen for AGI to happen and definitely an LLM by itself is not gonna be AGI and an LLM just on a little bit of a loop or with a little bit of AI engineering is also not gonna be AGI. There's a lot that still needs to happen and it's pro it's, I think it's likely that we need a breakthrough and where it's either not the transformer technology or it's some other 
combination of transformer where it's different enough to where it's kind of its own new version of the technology. They still, all the large language models still today, and I expect this to happen with GPT-5, have off the rails inevitability. If you put them on a loop, very quickly they go off the rails and go off into la-la land. If there's something that's not in their data set, they cannot handle it. It can be the simplest thing in the world that a human would be like, of course, this is how you do it. But if it's not in their data set, it does not do a good job of doing that. I expect that to be the same for GPT-5. I do expect that GPT-5 will be better at agent building. Like O1 does help with agent building. Although, here's the thing, you can build really good agents right now if you know how to do it. If you're just putting an LLM on a loop, which some popular agent builder guy uh, said this year, uh, then yeah, you're going to have trouble building it. And if you're, because you're leaning too hard on the LLMs. But if you're building agents just like you're building software, you probably don't need GPT-5 for most of the use cases. Uh, in fact, what you want to do within any software or agent is use the smallest, least expensive, fastest model that you can uh, to solve the problem. And so a lot of times we end up using GPT-3.5, maybe we fine tune it, or even like a mini model for very specific scenarios. In that, that case, what it, GPT-5 doesn't help there at all. Um, and there are, are still gonna be very serious limitations with transformers that cr make it so that I, I don't think AGI is really very feasible. Um, you know, it's weird because you have a bunch of computer scientists saying, here's what we need to build AGI. We need the systems one thinking and the system two thinking, and then we have AGI magically. Well, we do not have AGI. Uh, Strawberry is not AGI in my opinion. And if, uh, in, in the Strawberry video, I go over the definition. Strawberry's own definition of AGI is where it's missing several pieces of the puzzle. I actually think that even if we had systems one and system two perfectly down, which it's arguable if we have system two thinking perfectly down, uh, that that's not enough. I think you need to be able to create new ingredients. Um, I think that's um, implied. You know, there, there's an idea that there's nothing new in the world and that no one ever creates anything new, and I don't think that's true. Um, otherwise, how would we ever have anything? Um, how did we ever have computers? Somebody had to think of that first. There was not, computers didn't exist a million years ago. Um, but also, here, and here's the biggest thing, and, and I, this, is, this is common in just across all sorts of organizations, the, it's dramatically un underestimated how much connective tissue is needed in a complex system. I think there's a ton of connective tissue that still needs to be built and done properly to make AGI. It is possible that with a transformer, with, a, a really, with LLMs, you could build an AGI uh, with, if you really had all these other things down, without may, maybe without new ingredients, maybe by stretching a little bit of the, the boundaries of what really AGI, or, or the definition of what you really want AGI to, to, be done, to be done. But there's a ton of connective tissue that people are, that are, are not building, that, that are not LLMs. Um, in fact, I would say it's a really good agent, and, and most people are not building really good agents. Um, and there's just a lot of other things in between the LLMs that you need to do. Will GPT-5 speed up things? So speed up edge case development? Yeah, absolutely. It'll do better edge cases. Will it speed up AI technology? Probably, although there's some arguments uh, that it's actually slowing down as it sucks up all the, the money and the time and the energy and the resources overall from other from maybe creating a new breakthrough technology? Will it speed up using LLMs as tools? Maybe. I think a little bit, but not so much. Um, will it speed up AI engineering? Maybe. It depends. I, I think this is more of a uh, people getting the clue in on the, on the fact that using LLMs as tools is just as important and probably actually going to be more important as time goes on uh, than the actual LLMs themselves. This is something Satya Nadella uh, said in in one of his uh, tweets recently. I think I'm gonna make a whole video on that. But uh, that basically how you steer the models is more important than actually the models themselves, especially as they become commoditized. Um, Strawberry, Orion, QSTAR, is it gonna speed up kind of the logic process? Probably. Um, but again, I, I think it's gonna be marginal and they're already kind of fighting with a, a, a rising tide. Is it gonna speed up agents building? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, again, I, I think most of what you need to do with agents, you can do right now. Um, I just think that people are going about it with a two LLM centric solution. Is it gonna speed up real world solutions? Yeah. Again, I think it's not gonna be game changing like three to four, but it should, there definitely are gonna be some new use cases that we couldn't, things that we, that we just, it, it struggled with before that it, it'll get better at this point. 
Um, is it going to speed up the proper solution architecture? Maybe not. Like the better GPT-5 is, the more people are going to lean on it, and the, the less they're going to actually build real software that can actually build this, this actual solutions. Anyway, I think I beat, beat this down uh, quite a bit. Thank you. If you're still with me, please like the video and leave a comment below. I appreciate your time. Uh, I'm happy to discuss anything if you disagree with any of my points in here. Uh, if you'd like a free custom AI, AI implementation roadmap for your organization, give us a call or click the link below. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.